Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and understand the subject of auditing. And uh, so basically I have decided to cover the standards and auditing one by one. So before I go for the standards and auditing, let's cover the understand the definition of auditing itself, right? So basically what is auditing? Auditing is defined as an independent examination. So what do you mean by independent examination? Yeah, let's go ahead and see that first. So basically, means audits are done unbiasedly by qualified chartered accountants who express their opinions in their audit reports correct so opinions expressed by auditors can only act as an information for stakeholders and investors but not a recommendation made to the investors right so basically independent examination can be said like in a cricket match there's an umpire he's supposed to be unbiased towards both the teams right he cannot give decisions in favor of one team always. He has to see the uh, what has happened. And if it's out, you should say out. If it's not out, you should say not out, right? So you can't be unbiased. The same way an auditor has to have an independent examination of all the records and all the things which we'll discuss later. And then he has to make an independent examination being unbiased and he has to express an opinion in the audit report. So I hope that is clear. And then what independent examination? So basically, he has to do independent examination of what? He has to do independent exa examination of the financial information. Now, what is this financial information? Let's go down a bit and understand that. So, yeah. So, basically, financial information can be said to be regarding what? Uh, what kind of information might you might require? Like uh, purchases, sales, personal expenses, drawings, etc. Right? So, basically, uh, a company you're going for an audit to a company okay uh, you have a client uh, who's a company which is a company and uh, you see that the purchases are uh, no not uh, right not correct they are uh, really one one month it's too high one month it's too low and they're like just that they don't even have that much inventory which so it's basically you feel like there's some kind of fraud and activity going there so you will request for the financial information regarding purchases right same way you feel something is going on with the sales even if it's not going on you will anyway make a check checking of all these things and you'll check if there's lots of personal expenses drawings and you'll ask them for the bills for the same so this is the financial information which an auditor requires now let's come back so an audit is defined as an independent examination which we understood of financial information what financial information purchases sales drawings many more things are that you want to maybe check uh, the rental receipts the rental payments it can be anything so basically any financial information you want you can independently examine that information now where will you find this financial information you will find this financial information they will be contained in the financial statements so what on all comprise of the financial statement let's get to that so financial statements include these general so basically the trading account of the client or the company you are going to audit for the profit and loss account the balance sheet the statement of cash flows or otherwise called as cash flow statement and the notes to accounts regarding all these things and the related disclosures and there might be certain amendments here and there so for that you might require to see the guidance notes circulars and notices right so the financial statement as a whole are basically your uh, trading PL balance sheet and cash flow and the notes to accounts these are the main things of your financial statements so basically an auditor or auditing is basically defined as an independent examination of the financial information contained in these financial statements so basically you're an auditor you go to a client's office and now you want to get information regarding purchases you're going to do an independent examination of the purchases by seeing the information in the trading and PL account of the purchases and you will try to compare that with the purchase diary or the purchase book in the throughout the month throughout the year right and after doing this after examining in the, doing independent examination of the financial information continuing financial statements what will you do you will be expressing an opinion what is this expressing an opinion let's come to that now so basically by expressing an opinion uh, we can say that uh, general points because we will read this in detail in essay 700 and essay 705 so that we'll discuss this in further for now the general points that you can keep in mind is that there are four kinds of opinions uh, so basically the first one is unmodified opinion here you have a clean shit there's no problem you think it's like perfect okay 
then you generally give a uh, you can say that this is relating to SA 700 okay and SA 705 has three kinds of opinions one is qualified one is adverse and one is disclaimer of opinion so these things in detail we will read in SA 705 and SA 700 for now you can just memorize them which is unmodified opinion qualified opinion adverse opinion and the disclaimer of opinion right so now let's go back to the definition so we have read the first four parts of the definition last part is for expressing opinion regarding true and fair view so basically all these things are doing to with a true and fair view right so auditing is basically defined as an independent examination of financial information contained in financial statements for expressing opinion regarding true and fair view now what is this true and fair view so this true and fair view basically auditing situation the auditor what he has to do he has to collect some evidence how will you know that these purchases are right or not by seeing financial information this financial statements you will uh, see the purchase number but you have to compare now with the bills so there is the, you have to collect audit evidence for the bills right and after that you have to evaluate those bills and check it right professional skepticism basically here comes into play Professional skepticism in a line, if I have to define it, it means an auditor who has a mind, a questioning mind. You have to ask the client questions. You have to, to gather evidence, to collect evidence and to evaluate the evidence. You have to know the art of asking questions and that is basically professional skepticism. And after these things, after con uh, collecting the evidence, after evaluating the evidence, you will formulate an opinion. And this opinion, whichever you form, formulate you will communicate that opinion through your audit report so when you communicate that opinion through the audit report the auditor's opinion basically will have to uh, elaborate whether the financial statements are showing a true and fair view so here this statements the financial statements showing true and fair view you will if you open your practice manual you open your study material in your auditing book you will see the statement literally in every every answer so basically you have to understand this to the root so what is this true and fair view? True means basically the information is financially correct. The information is financially correct. It will confirm with the standards, the legislation, the it will agree with the underlying records. That is what true means. Okay. But this is different when it comes to fair. Fair means the information is impartial. It is clear and it is unbiased. And it reflects the commercial substance of transaction of the entity. So basically the true will give you the true view will basically uh, conclude that all the standards are other to all the legislation laws are other to and all the underlying records are complying with and the information is financially correct. But FAIR will get get you the conclusion if these information are clear, impartial and unbiased. So an auditor has to give a true and fair view on the financial statements, right? And also you have to note one thing, how much ever the auditor will try to give a true and fair view, sometimes it is, auditor is also human being. He is not a robot to know and know, uh, check everything in detail. So it's an important note, the auditor can only give you a reasonable assurance, less than 100%. He cannot give you 100% assurance that whatever the information is there in the statement is absolutely correct. He cannot give you that assurance. So auditor can only give reasonable assurance, which is meaning less than 100% assurance to the client or to the, uh, when he's submitting the audit report, he cannot give you a absolute assurance. Absolute assurance hundred percentage, but auditor can give you less than hundred percentage. So that's reasonable assurance. So we have covered mostly the entire definition. Let me just check if I have left anything. Yeah, so basically there's one more important thing left. So basically the definition is clear, right? So auditor is defined what? As auditing is defined as what? An independent examination of what? Of financial information. This financial information is contained in what? Financial statements. What is, why, why are we checking the financial statements? For expressing opinion. How should we express opinion? And on what? Regarding true and fair view. Of what? Of the financial statements. So basically, Auditing is an independent examination of the financial information contained in financial statements for expressing opinion regarding true and fair view. Okay. Now, after you understood the definition of auditing, let's understand this. 
so every company or every client you will uh, have will have a balance sheet right so in a balance sheet uh, you have assets and liabilities right who makes the balance sheet the management is uh, involved in the preparation of financial statements in management you can say one person plays a key role in the preparation of financial statements he is called the maker he is the cfo so the cfo is basically the chief financial officer so the cfo of the company is basically responsible for making the balance sheet and the profit and loss account he has to basically he is the one who has to follow the accounting standards which are issued by the icai right so the maker is the management for the financial statements now when we uh, see the same thing the audits are not concerned with the making of the balance sheet they are not concerned with the preparation of financial statements they are concerned with the checking of the financial statements the auditors are basically and the audits are basically concerned with the checking so the auditor is basically the checker he is not the maker okay so basically auditor is a checker and this auditor is, has to be a basically a qualified chartered accountant he should also have a certificate of practice cop they call it in short so basically certificate of practice what does it give it give to the auditor it basically gives him the right to check the financial information in the financial statements and express your opinion in audit report as we did in the definition of auditing right so the auditor in order to check the financial statements will have to correspond or other to now also has to follow the standards on auditing which are issued by the ICA again one more thing you have to realize that the maker that is the person who prepares the financial statements and the checker the person who checks the financial statements cannot be the same person how fair is it that if i make the own financial statements and i, I review the same it's not fair right so basically the maker and the checker cannot be the same person right so basically this lecture has covered the definition of auditing is given you the understanding of who is the maker and who prepares the financial statements who checks the financial statements and also that the maker and checker are different people and also what independent examination means what professional skepticism means in a glance what are the financial informations what are the financial statements and what kind of opinions can be made and what is true and fair view i hope this video has helped you all thank you so much aryan shall signing